uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm just going to set up uh, this presentation, if I may. So uh, my name is Thomas Micah, and I'm Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of POET. This is a really very exciting time for POET, and I'm pleased that I can introduce you to the company at this early stage. We are still a development stage company, which means that we have no significant revenue. However, after several years of being a development stage company, we're now doing product designs with customers that will generate significant revenue beginning next year. Our vision is to become a global leader in the field, in our field, and I hope that in these few minutes, I can show you why we believe our vision can be made real. All of the risks associated with uh, investing in our stock are fully outlined in detail on CDAR in Canada and on sac.gov. So please refer to those documents before you invest in POET. POET is a design and development company focused on photonics, which I will explain later. We have good technology and intellectual property, which is protected by patents, trade secrets, and know-how. We're headquartered in Toronto, so we trade on the TSX Venture Exchange and on the highest tier of the OTC market in the US, the OTCQX. We have operations in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and in Singapore. We also have two companies that we recently opened in China. One's a subsidiary, Poet Optoelectronics Shenzhen, and a joint venture company called Superphotonics in Xiamen. As a small company, it's very important for us to have good partners. So I will talk more about the joint venture later in this presentation. Leading our company are two of the most qualified and experienced people in the photonics industry. For 20 years, Suresh Venkatesan was the chief technology officer at Global Founders one of the largest semiconductor companies in the, United, in, in the world. Uh, he is our chairman and chief executive officer. About a year ago, we were joined by Vivek Raj Gurria, who started and ran several companies in the photonic space, including several divisions of large major companies in the world. Most recently, he started and led Maycom's photonics division. You can find the biographies of our management team and board of directors on our website, and I encourage you to go there and look at them. The technology and products that we have developed are very important to some of the largest and highest growth markets and trends in computing today, including cloud computing, which is made possible by large companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Google, and Facebook. These data center operators are building hyperscale data centers at the rate of one per month on top of the 500 hyperscale data centers that already exist in the world. Other markets for our products are in artificial intelligence, in 5G communications, and what we call edge computing. Pushing computing all the way to the edge of the network to the users such as in your home security systems or with machine-to-machine -machine communications called the Internet of Things. The demand for data in the form of videos and video conferencing is what drives the growth of these markets, and every company involved in data communications wants and needs continuously higher speeds, better performance, and lower cost. Photonics is fundamental to being able to deliver continuous improvements in data communications. It's very hard to make a presentation about a technology company without saying anything about the technology. I hope you will be patient with me for a few minutes while I cover some basics. Photonics has to do with light. Fiber optics technology has been around for decades because light can carry more data faster and cheaper than copper. But unlike electrons, that travel through copper on a printed circuit board, light can only be produced, guided, and detected using certain special materials that are not common 
or well known by most people. To create light and to manipulate the light so that data can be transmitted on the light beam and received at the other end, photonic devices use a combination of special photonic, electronic, and optical devices, some of which are listed here, in a combination, in a way in which they all have to talk to and interact with one another. The problem over the past 20 to 30 years has been that combining all of these different materials and devices into one package has been both difficult and extremely expensive. What Poet has invented is a unifying platform that makes that integration much cheaper and easier for all kinds of companies to use different applications. What Poet has done is similar to what Apple and other manufacturers of smartphones did 20 years ago. They produced a device that made it easier to integrate many different devices into one. A smartphone is a phone, a camera, a calculator, an address book, a photo album, uh, a messaging system, an email system, and so on all in one device. Smartphones are not as cheap as they once were, but the one smartphone is a lot cheaper than all of those other devices would cost if they were bought separately. That is basically what Poet has done in photonics. We have been able to integrate many different kinds of devices into a single chip and to do it cheaper, faster, and better than any other me method. We call it the Poet Optical Interposer. The schematic diagram shown here may not mean much to anyone outside the photonics industry, but to our competition, and more importantly, to our customers, it's a miracle of design and elegance, very much like what Steve Jobs did with inventing the iPhone. Any place where fiber optics is used. The Poet Optical Interposer is poised to disrupt the market by offering a better, cheaper, and simpler way to combine electronic, photonic, and optical components into one small chip scale package. Even though there were many different applications that we could choose from, we had to pick one to start, and that one was the transceiver market in data centers. We started with transceivers because these small pluggable devices that fit into the backs of servers and networks in a rack that you can see on the right hand of this slide. We chose that for a good reason. Over 50% of the cost of equipping a hyper data, hyperscale data center are these transceivers that you see on the back of the server rack. There are tens of thousands of these in a typical data center. They convert the electronic signals from the switches and other computer chips into light signals and back again, between and among the servers, between the one server rack and another rack in the building, which are often hundreds of yards away, and from one data center to another data center or from a data center to a metro center, all on fiber optic cables, all using transceivers and all communicating data at the speed of light. The piece on the left, identified as the Poet Optical Engine, is built on an optical interposer. It's the highest value portion of the transceiver module. What you see in the, in the green, on the green printed circuit board, are less valuable to the way that the transceiver actually functions. So our business model currently is around delivering Poet optical engines based on the optical, in, optical interposer to manufacturers of modules, transceiver manufacturers. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? This shows graphically why a transceiver that is based on a Poet optical engine or interposer is so cheap. Can a conventional gold box or barrel that you see in this contain many parts inside, each of which has to be placed perfectly in order to work. This is done in large factories using hundreds of people and machines testing the device 
after the placement of each of the components that go inside of those barrels. They're done one at a time. Poet builds our optical engines, which is shown in, in black on the bottom of the slide, just like semiconductors are built, hundreds and thousands at a time, rather than one at a time. We call that wafer scale. And we can do wafer scale because we have something that no one else has. We have the Poet Optical Interposer. So this small chip replaces all of the hardware that's on the left side of the, uh, of the screen. Eventually, we will take over the rest of this hardware and put it on, put the entire transceiver in a single chip scale package, one tenth the size that it is today. You don't have to take my word for why the Poet Optical Interposer is a potentially disruptive and revolutionary invention. Earlier this year, we completed a 14 month project with a leading North American network systems company whose name we are not allowed to disclose that validated every aspect of our technology. And we are continuing discussions with that company to see how the optical interposer can fit into their plans for future products. We also just signed a definitive agreement for the creation of a joint venture valued at US 50 million with a subsidiary of Sanan Optoelectronics, the world's largest producer of LEDs. Sanan produces 25 million six inch wafers, LED wafers a year, and they have endorsed our technology and become a partner in the manufacture of optical engines based on the Poet Optical Interposer. We are in the process of hiring the team, ordering the equipment and transferring a Poet know-how to the joint venture where Poet will own 47% without putting up any cash whatsoever. It's important to note that none of Poet's fundamental IP is being transferred to Sanon. It's also important that you understand that this is this agreement that we have with Sanon is for transceivers only. So there are a number of other vertical markets, very large markets that are still available to Poet to sell to and supply around the world. The joint venture is an important strategic step for Poet because it allows us to build a highly efficient supply chain and manufacturing infrastructure that we would not be able to afford on our own. With the size and reputation of Sanan, no potential customers question our ability to scale rapidly and to supply product in large volumes. The JV with Sanan is a direct endorsement of Poet and confirmation of the potential for the Poet Optical Interposer. When I started this presentation, I told you that this is an exciting time for Poet. Here's the reason. We are now designing products for real customers. They have to go through stages of development and qualification, but for a company that has been without revenue with what we know will be a revolutionary product, to seeing that it's about to become real and will turn into revenue for us is the most exciting period that any technology company goes through. We've had analyst coverage from HC Wainwright in the US for a couple of years now. The analyst there has a price target of US $1.50 per share. Zach's small cap research puts a current value independently on POET of US $1.80 per share. Last night, Poet's common stock closed on the OTC at US 42 cents per share. Today, Poet has proven technology, products designed and customers committed. We have scalable manufacturing with a great partner and an experienced management and technical team. And we hope based on today's presentation that we will have some enthusiastic new shareholders that will benefit from being in the company at this early stage. So thanks, and if there's any other, any questions, if there's time left, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Tom. So uh, we have a few questions here for you to elaborate a bit. The first one coming from Drake, you've signed a joint venture with a Chinese company, company recently. Can you tell us more about the significance of this? We did, we signed it with uh, 
a subsidiary of Sanan Optal Electronics. Uh, that's the one we had mentioned. And uh, it's, it's a massive company. It's the largest compound semiconductor company in the world. And, um, and we're going to have a true joint venture in, located in Xiamen, which we are now in the process of opening up. Okay, the second one coming from Jackson. He said, what are the main applications of your technology? What, which, which sectors are you going uh, after first? Yep, so the sectors are transceivers first. Um, and I, I explained what those transceivers are. Um, we're also, we have a range of applications that we can go after. One of the most important is we, something that we call co-packaged optics. And what that simply means is that the speeds of switches in these data centers are getting so fast, they're taking up so much energy that, it's, that they have to be redesigned. And we have to bring the ability to transfer the, the electrons or convert the electrons into photons closer to where the switch actually exists. This is a pressing need and it um, involves not only those, all the network switches in any, any data center or anywhere in fact, but also can be applied to edge applications um, where we're developing with the company a, what's called an inference engine in, in art for artificial intelligence, which means that what you, how you interact with your refrigerator, for example, uses AI to determine what you may want to purchase next. And those inference engines are these tiny, um, tiny chips that, uh, that are built on a poet optical interposer. In fact, it, it's, it, it really is what the poet optical interposer is, is made for, is to be able to deliver computing power and optical, optoelectronic power very close to the user. So that there are just hundreds of applications that that could apply to. Yeah, maybe I'll squeeze the last one question from Victor. Uh, he said, if the JV will commence production third quarter 2021, when will you announce the sales for these initial production runs? Uh, we will announce sales uh, when, when they occur. <laughs> okay, good, good, good to know. Thank you for being here with us to share your special uh, story. Uh, we'll, uh, our audience definitely learn a bit more and looking forward to following your stock. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Colin.